Joining us for today's announcement are to my left, Rangers President Glenn Sather, Assistant General Manager Chris Drury, to my right, General Manager Jeff Gordon, and to Jeff's right is the next head coach of the New York Rangers, the 35th head coach in Rangers history, David Quinn. I'd like to welcome David's guests, family, and friends today, along with Rangers players Kevin Shattenkirk, Kevin Hayes. We'll begin today with remarks from the podium from Jeff and David, and then we'll follow up with a Q&A. We'll then break for a photo op up here, and then we'll break for one-on-ones. And now to begin, Rangers General Manager Jeff Gordon. Thank you, John. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming down on such a beautiful day in New York. Uh, no traffic. Um, this is a very important day uh, for the Rangers. Um, I couldn't be happier with, with our selection. Um, we're also naming a head coach in a time where uh, we're rebuilding our team. And uh, as pretty well documented, um, you know, we're, we're looking for somebody with a fresh ideas and fresh approach. And, and uh, as we went through this process, um, we met with a number of people and talked to a lot of good hockey people. And uh, it just kept coming back to David as the guy we, we wanted and, and could see as we move forward with the Rangers and, and do what we have to do. Um, his resume speaks for itself. He's been a lifetime hockey guy, a lifetime coach. Uh, he's had success at every level. Um, but things that stick out for us were obviously his, his communication skills, I think, will be important as we move forward. Uh, his feel for the game, um, the way he wants to play, just meshed well with what you know we want to do here. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things I could go on, and um, just a very impressive guy and, a, and somebody we want out in front of our team as we move, as we move forward. So, um, without without doing much more, it's 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 my honor and pleasure to announce our 35th coach, David Quinn. Thank you, Jeff. A little bit different than a BU press conference, I'll tell you that. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Dolan, Glenn Sather, Jeff Gorton, and Chris Jury for this incredible opportunity. Uh, when I was on the flight coming down yesterday, there were a lot of things going through my head. Um, you know, all of a sudden, I'm going to be named the head coach of the New York Rangers, and you kind of look back at your path and figure out how you got here, and there's a lot of people that have helped me along the way. First and foremost, my mother and father. I've been incredibly lucky to have parents that supported me no matter what I did. Gave me, a lot of gave me a lot of love and support, and I certainly wouldn't be standing here today without them. Uh, Larry Piatelli and Peter Bragdon. In 1980, they gave me an incredible opportunity uh, to go to the Kent School, which changed my life. Uh, they were incredible mentors for me, and they've had a huge impact on me. Ben Smith. Uh, without Ben Smith, I wouldn't be into coaching. Uh, he recruited me to go to BU. When my playing career ended, he gave me the opportunity to be an assistant coach at Northeastern and I found my calling in life and my passion in life. Uh, Jack Parker coached me at BU, a mentor, a friend. I was fortunate enough to play for him, coach under him, and was incredibly, incredibly supportive of me through my five years at Boston University. And last and not least, Boston University itself. Uh, this was a hard decision uh, because of my passion and my love for the Boston University. Um, it was an incredible opportunity for five years. Uh, they support their program unlike any others in all the college athletics, uh, right on down from Dr. Brown to Gene Morrison. Uh, but the two guys I work closely with on a daily basis, Todd Clip, the senior VP, uh, who became a very good friend of mine through the five years of there, uh, but more importantly, the athletic director, Drew Marichello, who we worked side by side for five years, uh, turned into one of my best friends, uh, which made the whole situation difficult for me. But. At the end of the day, uh, the more that we talked and the more that Jeff and I and Chris talked, it just seemed a nat like a natural fit. And, you know, I'm 52 years old, and at this point in my life, uh, to be able to be the head coach of the New York Rangers was an, an opportunity I could not pass up. Uh, everything just aligned from where they're at as an organization to my relationship with Jeff and Chris to the support we get from Glenn and, Sh and Jim Schoenfeld. Uh, this was really the only situation that I would have left Boston University for. And with that being said, I can't tell you how humbled and honored I am to be the coach of the New York Rangers. Thank you.
Okay, we'll take questions now. Uh, please raise your hand. We have handheld mics. Ryan, uh, Lindsay, and Mike each have a mic, so please uh, raise your hand, identify yourself, and uh, ready to go. Questions? Matt, go ahead. Uh, Matt Calamy with NewYorkRangers.com. David, can you just kind of take us through the the process and, and when you kind of when it when you realized that this was this was the right choice for you to come to New York? Well, like I said, when you know they first reached out out to me, it certainly was a job that was different, unlike any others. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to get approached by some NHL teams over the last few years, but when it's the New York Rangers, it's a little bit different. And you know, through the process, as like I said, the more we talked, the more this just seemed like a fit that I could not pass up. And like I said, where, where we're at as an organization from a rebuild standpoint, uh, the, f the relationship that I have with Je Jeff and Chris, uh, you know, the opportunity for us to talk freely, we all seem to be on the same page uh, through the process of talking with them. Every time they said that this is what we're looking to do, instinctively I would say to myself, I do that, that's kind of my coaching DNA. So, you know, as time went on, it just seemed like more of a natural fit, you know, every time we spoke. Next. Uh, hi, David. Scott Charles, Associated Press. Uh, player relationships are so important in professional sports today. How do you plan on changing your approach from connecting with the college player to, say, a veteran player with a big contract and a track, and a track record of history of a success in this league? Well, at the end of the day, this is all about relationships. And obviously, you don't have a similar relationship with a 20-year-old that you do with a 35-year-old. And I've been fortunate enough to coach at the NHL level where I've dealt with guys that are older with big contracts. And, you know, to me, it's all about having people skills and understanding what, you know, what motivates somebody. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, that to me, that's something that, you know, as you go through coaching, you learn those skills. And, you know, one of the things that I felt comfortable with in taking this job is that I've been fortunate to coach at the NHL level, coach at the American League level. And I think all those stops have prepared me uh, to handle situations like that. Justin. Justin Tash, New York Daily News. You alluded, oh, sorry, over here. you alluded to it a little bit, but just how how conflicted were you about uh, leaving BU? I mean, you talk about how much you you love being there. I mean, how, how conflicted were you about about leaving that that job? I was conflicted. It was <laughs> again when you're in the situation I was in, and you know one of the great things about college hockey is uh, you're more than a coach. You develop lifelong relationships. Um, you have an impact on players on and off the ice. And, you know, one of the things that drew me to coaching is I know how much the coaches meant to me in my life. And I was hoping to have that type of impact on our players. And, uh, you know, I was coaching at my alma mater, coaching with people I loved, working for people I loved. And, you know, I kind of felt like there was some unfinished business. But like I said, the longer this went on at this stage of my career, the relationships with Jeff and Chris, uh, you know, where we're at as an organization, and it's the New York Rangers. This is for both of you. It's Mark Rosen from Sports Talk New York. Jeff, you guys have embraced the R word, rebuild. And in New York, that's something that fan bases and media sometimes don't have the patience for. So why did you decide that this was the time to do that? And, and David, for you, what does a coach of a rebuild look like? Um, uh, you know, I think it's pretty well documented that, you know, our team, we had a good run for a long time, and we've discussed this. We got to a certain point where our franchise needed to change and go in a different direction. Um, so, obviously, a number, a number of trades we made and transactions um, that, that led to where we are now. Um, but, I, you know, it's an exciting time. You know, it's, when, you, when you go through something like that, uh, it's an eye-opening experience. It's a hard experience. But at the same time, it's, it's really exciting as we, as we look forward to see some of our young players coming. Um, you know, we have a lot of good players on our team still, too. So, um, and now we're, in, we're adding a coach that, uh, you know, obviously we think a lot of to, uh, to lead us in the future. You know, for me, it's just an incredible opportunity. I, you know, I've been, I'm familiar with a lot of the players. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to coach some of them, know some of them. Um, at the end of the day, this is about coming to the rink every day, making every individual better, and making the team better. And, you know, the winning and losing will take care of itself. And, you know, to me, it's just, you know, an exciting opportunity. And, you know, I know we do use the word rebuild, but, you know, our goal is just to continue to get better on a daily basis. In the back. David John Chandler with WNBC. Um, 
you mentioned how conflicted you were to leave Boston University. I noticed there's a big BU connection here, though, right on the dice with Chris down, down the podium yeah. from you. I, how much of an influence did he have on your decision here? And Chris, you can chime in on that as well. Um, obviously, like I said, both my relation, I've known Jeff for 25 years as well. So, you know, it was a combination of the relationship with Jeff and Chris. And we've always talked hockey for a long time. Uh, but obviously, when you go through this process, you talk a little bit more in depth. And I think you find out a little bit more about each other as this process went on. And it just seemed the, the longer we talked and the more we talked, it just seemed like a perfect fit. And, you know, to be on the same page and to be able to have the open dialogue that we're all going to be able to have uh, when we start this, like I said, it was a huge piece of my decision. SNY coach, how would you describe your coaching style and the culture you'd like to instill? Um, I'd like to think I'm fair and demanding. Uh, you know, I don't, there's no gray area with me with players. Um, they want to get better, they want to be held accountable. Uh, but the message has to be that this is in your best interest. It's not about me being the, be, the big tough coach, it's about me letting them know that everything, that everything that we're doing is to make them better players. And I think when a player realizes that, they, when they realize how much you care about them, there's a trust factor that creeps in, and I think that's where success happens. Okay. Next, Richard. Justin Walters, file someone right over here. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Only a handful of coaches have made the jump straight from the college ranks to the pros. What do you think your toughest transition is going to be? Obviously, you have a lot of familiarity with the roster. Well, obviously, being a first-time head coach in the National Hockey League will be a little bit of a learning curve, but as, you know, I actually said this to Chris and Jeff when we were talking. We actually, this topic came up, and you know, I remember back in 09 when I left BU to become a head coach in the American League for the first time, and I had never coached hockey, <clears throat> uh, pro hockey. Uh, I had a little bit of a knot in my stomach because there was some uncertainty. Uh, I've been very fortunate in my coaching career to coach at a lot of different levels, from the U.S. National Program to college, head coach in the American League and the NHL, and. There's no knot in my stomach today because I think all those steps along the way have prepared me for this. I think I'll go through probably normal learning curves as a first-time head coach, but uh, I can't wait to get started. Neil. Uh, Neil Best from Newsday for David. You, you guys have all talked about rebuilding, obviously. W what's your take on the goaltending situation? I mean, Henrik is uh, – how does Henrik fit into your plan to rebuild, at least for this coming season? Henrik's one of the best goalies in the world. And, you know, everybody knows Henrik here. I haven't had a chance to talk with him yet, but no one's, as mo no one's more committed. Uh, no one works harder. Uh, and I'm excited to have him as our goalie. Coach, congratulations. Tina Servasio from Fox 5. Um, since youth and rebuilding is sort of the theme right now, what is your plan as far as developing, player developing players and also specifically skill development with these guys that are already in the NHL? Well, you know, obviously we're going through the stage to figure out what the roster is going to look like. But, you know, our approach will be, uh, again, you want to spend as much time with the individuals as possible. You know, we're all, we, we have systems, obviously. But, you know, the concepts within the systems are going to be important. You know, stick positioning, angling, all the hockey terminology and all the things that you need to do to become a better player, whether it be from a forecheck standpoint, a D-zone standpoint. And these things you've got to work on daily in practice. And practice is going to be important. I mean, you've got to come to the rink every day with a game-like mentality and work on getting better. And, you know, we're going to do that. We're going to be in great shape. Our practice will be fast, and there'll be a lot of attention to detail. Okay. Anyone else? Good. Stan, one more. Stan Fischler from MSG. As a kid, who were your role models and which team did you root for and how did you feel about the Rangers when you were a kid? Do I have to answer that? <laughs> Being from Cranston, Rhode Island, <laughs> growing up in the Bobby Orr era. <laughs> my idol was actually Ray Bork as a hockey player, but my real idol was Larry Bird. So, uh, uh, but Ray Bork was somebody I had an awful lot of respect for as a player, just the way he handled himself. I was a defenseman. Uh, and he was somebody that obviously was one of the elite players of all time. And you know, growing up in that area, he was someone that I certainly admired from afar. And I'm fortunate enough to get to know him. I actually coached his son at one point. And uh, so those were the guys that I kind of, kind of were drawn to. And the Bruins were my favorite team, unfortunately. <laughs>
The Rangers were my second favorite team. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. So we'll have the uh, photo op up here and then we're gonna break for one-on-ones. Thank you everyone.